Hi guys, I wanted to do this video um, the last couple of days. It's just been on my spirit about um, my last video when I spoke about Fatima. And, um, you know, I've heard rumors over the years, but I didn't really know exactly what was going on with her other than I did hear some claims and stuff. I found out that Fatima is actually the Virgin Mary, and Fatima is the place where this uh, the Virgin Mary supposedly came and appeared to these three young children. And I realized that I didn't have enough authority to really speak about this, and so I decided I was going to research the claims that she made and compare them with the Word of God. And I wanted to say first that a brother on one on the site had asked me to ask the father about this. And I did not want to do that because I do not want to offend my father or my Savior, Jesus Christ. Because to me, anybody who's claiming that you should pray to them or anything like that, I have a problem with. So I told him I would not do that, but I did concede to praying to the father to see if he had a word for this brother. And to my surprise, the very next morning when I went to prayer, the Lord did speak to me and gave me a word for him. And it was a very encouraging word, but it didn't mention anything about Fatima. So at the end, I said to him, but Father, what about Fatima? And he answered me and he said, she is a myth, my child. Well, that surprised me because I don't, I would not have said she was a myth. So I had to look up the meaning of myth to find out what the father was saying. And the meaning of myth is, it's a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people or explaining some material or social phenomena and typically, typically involving supernatural beings or events. And number two, meaning a widely held but false belief or idea. So obviously God is saying that this whole thing with Fatima is a myth and it's a widely held false belief or idea. So then I went ahead and I wanted to find out exactly what the Virgin Mary supposedly said during these apparitions and compare them with the Word of God. And these are some of the claims. She said, My Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. So here she's cl claiming to be our safety, our refuge, and to lead us to God. She also said, you have seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. So here we see she's, a, she's claiming that if we are devoted to her immaculate heart, God is going to save us. So let's see what the Bible says. Who saves us? Okay, um, John 14.6 said, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Paul said in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when he says there's no other man, he also means woman, brothers and sisters. There's no man or woman that we have to go to to be saved except through Jesus Christ. Psalm 91 said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Psalm 46 1 said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. So anyone claiming to be a refuge and a safety and a way to find God, that's a lie. It's a lie from the enemy, it's a deception. And I do not believe any true Christian would be able to believe this false teaching. And uh, my second point is going to be about the rosary and repetitive prayers. The Bible is very clear that we are not to speak repetitive prayers. And the reason that Lord Jesus Christ told us not to do that is because it does not encourage an intimacy with our Father. When you just speak repetitive prayers for the sake of saying them a certain amount of times, um, that does not bring us closer to our Father. Um, uh, in, in the Rosary, they, they repeatedly, I guess, pray the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and Hail Mary. Now, Hail, Hail Mary are the words that Gabriel said to 
Mary when he told her that she was going to give birth to the Savior. Um, and those things, of course, are not bad in themselves. But to say them repetitively to the Father, you're not accomplishing anything. Um, and that's scriptural. Um, also, um, she, let's see, um, she said, I have come to amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. So again, that's a, that's a lie. It's a false uh, statement because Jesus is the only one who can pardon us of our sins. So you can see that she's claiming some very serious uh, lies. And I want to move on. She says, uh, sacrifice yourself for sinners and say often, especially when you make some sacrifice, Oh my Jesus, this is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners and in reparation for the offenses committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So now she's claiming that we are sinning against her. And of course, even when King David sinned so so badly with Bathsheba and had his his Uriah killed, he when when he went to the Lord, even he said, Against you and you only have I sinned. He said that in Psalm 51, 4. So he acknowledged the only one we really sin against is our Father. So we're not sinning against Mary. I don't know what she thinks we're doing to her, but anyway. And I know it's not Mary. I keep saying that, but for the sake of less words, I'm going to say Mary. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to my fourth point. She says, tell everybody that grace that God gives graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. All right, let's see where grace comes from. In John 1, 4, it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus Christ is the one who's full of grace. And in John 1, 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Once again, it's very clear we don't get grace from anyone else except Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's a little off subject, but again, by grace, um, through faith we are saved, and Jesus Christ is where we find grace. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I'm sorry, I lost my place here. Anyway, this whole thing is just so, um, it's so upsetting to me that anyone who calls themselves a Christian could believe the lies that come from this apparition. And I have to tell you, that this is Antichrist, and Antichrist, we know, comes from the pit of hell. So I just want to let you know that once we open ourselves up to lies like this, we are not, we're going to be deceived in more areas than just this area. So I just encourage you to please take this to the Lord, study it for yourselves, and find out just exactly what this Virgin Mary has claimed. Um, you know, guys, the Bible tells us in the New Testament that Mary and Jesus' brothers wanted to come in and speak to him. And, you know, they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside and they want to speak to you. And Jesus said to them, who are my mother and my brothers? He said, those who do the will of my father are my brothers, my mother and my sisters. And there in that story, he was showing us that Mary was no different than anyone else. She was a sinner saved by grace she was born in sin. It says Jesus is the only one who was sinless. So no matter what uh, an institution or anyone else tells you, Jesus is the only way to the Father. We do not need to pray to anyone else. We need to develop a relationship with our Father and our Savior. And that's the way we go to our Father is through Jesus Christ. So I hope this um, just explains a few things to you guys. I was surprised. I didn't. I didn't really realize the gravity of the nature of the claims that this apparition made. So God bless you guys. Let's all keep our robes white and talk to you again later. Bye.